Hello, my name is Rian Blom with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering team. This video is about deploying and configuring Avaya Aura Application Enablement Services 7.0 to work with Avaya Oceana 3.2. First, we will be deploying the AE Services OVA template through the VMware vSphere client. Provide a name for the AE Services virtual machine as it should be listed in VMware. Next, choose the required AE Services profile and then choose Thick Provision Lazy Zeroed for the virtual disk format. The deployment may take anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes to complete depending on where you are deploying the OVA from. Power on the virtual machine, then right click on the virtual machine name and select to open the console. After a few minutes you should see a message on the console asking whether you wish to configure the AE Services VM. Choose Yes. Complete the AE Services server configuration with details for your network. Once the login prompt is displayed on the console window, AE Services installation is complete. Next you will have to configure an AE Services server switch connection and a TSAPI link. Open a browser window and enter HTTPS with the IP address of your AE Services server. Log in with a CUST user and use the default password of CUSTPW. First we will set up the switch connection to Communication Manager. Click on Communication Manager interface, then on Switch Connections. Type a name for this connection in the Switch Connection field and click on Add Connection. Enter the password that you configured in the Communication Manager IP Services Administration page. And by default, the only other change we are going to make here is to select the Processor Ethernet option since that is where we are connecting to our CM. Next click on Edit PE CLAN IPs and enter the IP address of your CM. We should really go and restart AE services after this step but I'm also going to complete a few other items before restarting. Click on AE services in the menu on the left then on TSAPI. Next click on TSAPI links and configure settings for the TSAPI link. You also need to configure the WebLM server address, which could be a standalone WebLM server, a via Aura System Manager, or AES. After this, you need to check the T links in the security database and ensure that you have both an unsecure and a secure T link displayed. Then browse to Maintenance and Service Controller and restart AE services. Once the AE services restart has been completed, we want to verify that it is communicating with the Communication Manager and also that the TSAPI link is in a talking state. This assumes that you have already done the programming in Communication Manager to allow AE services server to connect and bring up a CTI link. Next we will configure a user for a via Oceana to connect to AE services. Click on user management then on user admin. Provide a user ID and password you would like to use for your environment. Make a note of these since you will have to configure it on the CSC attribute section in system manager later.
Then go to Security, Security Database and CTI Users. Select the CTI user you just created and provide the user unrestricted access. You may choose to do this before starting to configure AE Services, but we also want to make sure that the AE Services server is running on the latest available maintenance patches for the product. At the time of publishing, we were on AES 7.0.1 Super Patch 3. For full instructions on where to obtain the required patches, please refer to the Avaya support site. There are links to product support notices as well as release notes that provide more detail on available patches. Once patching is complete, use the SW version command to verify that the correct patches are listed. Next we will configure AE Services certificates. In this example I will be using certificates from Avaya Aura System Manager. Log into the System Manager web interface, then browse to Security, Certificates, then Authority. Under RA Functions, select the Add Entity option. Ensure that you select Inbound, Outbound, TLS for the End Entity Profile. Provide a username and password of your choice and then type the fully qualified domain name for the AE Services server in the CN Common Name field. At the bottom of the web page, select P12 File for Token you should receive a success message at the top of the page. Next, from the menu on the left, browse to Public Web, then Create Key Store. Type the username and password you used when you created the end entity in the previous step. Change the key length to a value higher than 1024 bits and then click on Enroll. The new certificate should download automatically. Then, under the Retrieve section, click on Fetch CA Certificates. Then download the PEM chain. The CA Certificate chain should download automatically. Now that we've obtained the required certificates from Avaya Aura System Manager, we will go ahead and import them into the AE Services server. From the AE Services Management console, select Security, Certificate Management, then CA Trusted Certificates. Click on Import. Choose the CA certificate chain you downloaded from System Manager and provide it with an alias of your choice. Then click on Apply. You should now see the CA certificate listed with the status of Valid. Next, click on Server Certificates, then on Import. Choose the P12 certificate file you downloaded from System Manager earlier and assign the AE Services certificate alias. You'll be prompted for a password, which is the password you created during the Add End Entity section in System Manager. Once applied, you should be able to see your service certificate installed with the status of Valid. After applying new certificates to the AE Services server, it has to be restarted. Go to Maintenance, Service Controller and Restart Linux. Now that AE Services and Communication Manager is talking and you have added a user as well as a certificate to the AES, it is time to perform the Avaya Oceana CSC Attribute Configuration. This is done from the Avaya Aura System Manager web interface. Once logged into System Manager, browse to Avaya Breeze under Elements. Then click on Configuration, then Attributes. Click on Service Clusters and select Oceana Cluster 1 
where you deployed the CSC service snapping. Select the CSC service. Add the AES user and password you created for Avaya Oceana in the AE Services User Management section. Then complete the CSC Communication Manager list entry with settings for your environment. Since this is a common place to make a mistake, I've copied an example of my entries out to show you the different fields. The provider ID must match the voice provider you added in Avaya Control Manager. AES IP is self-explanatory and the CM name must match the switch connection name you assigned in the AE Services Management console. Please note that this field is case sensitive. You also need to set Deploy CSC to True. You may be prompted to restart the node where the service is installed. Now we will go back to the AE Services server and verify connectivity from the CSC service. From the AES Management console under Status, Status and Control, click on the DMCC Service Summary link. You should expect to see a DMCC session from each of the Avaya Oceana Cluster 1 Breeze nodes. You should also expect to see existing devices, depending on how much of the Avaya Oceana configuration you have completed. That concludes this presentation of deploying and configuring Avaya Aura Application Enablement Services 7.0 to work with Avaya Oceana 3.2. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.